So, hello, Year 9. Uh, today, I'm just going to be talking to you about your English GCSEs, which you will be starting next year. So by the end of this little talk, you should know everything you need to know ahead of your GCSE studies next year. So the stuff that you've got to know before you start next year. Well, firstly, it's compulsory. Unlike many of your other GCSEs, history, design technology, some of the sciences, everyone across England has to study two GCSEs in, in English. One GCSE is literature and the other is language. Something that you also need to know is that all colleges across the country will require you to get at least a grade four in England. If you don't attain this grade, unfortunately, you will have to repeat your English language GCSE and you'll have to keep doing so until you pass. So there are two different GCSEs, as I've discussed. So let's look firstly at English language. It's helpful to think of English language as similar to a driving license. You need a driving license to show that you can drive. And that's something which you can show to prove to be. An English language GCSE is very similar. It's proof to the world that you are an effective reader and writer and someone who will they will want to employ in their workforce. To get this GCSE, you will need to sit two exams which together are worth 160 marks in total. Paper one will ask you questions on an extract from a fictional story. So this is something you're very familiar with already. You've read extract Dracula. Well, your paper one is going to ask you to do something very similar. Paper two will ask you to analyse and compare two non-fiction sources. Again, this is something quite similar to something you've already done this year when you were looking at the um, extracts around technology. So non-fiction sources, don't forget, are things like newspaper articles, speeches, um, extracts from autobiographies from famous figures. So, so for instance, to give you a speech from Donald Trump talking about how wonderful he is, and the other extract might be a newspaper article saying that he's a crook and a criminal. You would have to analyse and compare those two sources. Now, it's really important to know that 50% of the marks awarded for this GCSE are for your writing. Paper one will ask you to do some creative writing. So either writing a story or doing a piece of descriptive writing. Or paper two, to express your viewpoint. The exam typically asks you to give your view on something like whether or not you think TikTok should be banned for people under the age of 16, or should the government make um, drinks with lots of sugar in them more expensive? And it would be up to you to express your viewpoint in a clear, persuasive and convincing manner. So writing, a reminder, that's 50% of your GCSE, so so important. So over the next two years. Finally, there is a spoken language component to your English language GCSE. And what this basically means is that you'll be asked to write and deliver a speech on your topic, on a topic of your choosing for your GCSE. In the past, pupils have done things like uh, why Man City is a, a rubbish football club and why they don't deserve to have won anything they've won, how they've cheated, to things like uh, Rihanna being the greatest person who's ever some other people have done it on historical events or on the history of their family and where they come from. So there are a wide range of topics you can choose to do your speech on. So the English language GCSE, what are the skills and benefits you'll get? Well, by the end of this GCSE, you will become a fluent writer, something which is becoming increasingly important as more and more work transfers online. You'll learn how to read and analyse a range of different texts workplace once you get your you start working you'll have to read uh, emails letters contracts all of these different things and you'll, you'll need to make sure that you understand these texts and that you're able to think about what the agenda is and the purpose is of the person who wrote them this gcc will equip you with that skill creativity is something that's becoming increasingly important in the workforce so we're seeing that many robots are actually taking people's jobs and many jobs that exist now, whether or not that's driving cars or are working in factories, probably won't be here in 10 or 20 years. And creativity is becoming increasingly important. 
Well, English language, probably more than any other GCC, is one that encourages your creativity, encourages your independent thinking. It also asks you to think critically, something which is crucial for any high paying job, whether or not that's a doctor or a lawyer. It will encourage you to think deeper, to ask the question why, to consider how you and something that's crucial in getting you a job in the first place, it will develop your public speaking. It will give you the skills and confidence you'll need to impress in a job interview. Let's talk about the next GCC you do, English Literature. Again, in English Literature, you will sit two different papers. English Literature involves a lot of reading and a lot of kind of um, following stories. So two of the plays you'll read are Macbeth and most famous plays ever written and Spectacles is a mystery and a thriller which every year our GCC pupils relish read. You'll also read the novel A Christmas Carol of which there are several entertaining adaptions for. My personal favourites are Muppets Christmas Carol so it's a really easy novel to revise as well. And finally you'll study a collection of poems linked to power and conflict and these poems offer fascinating insights into stories from around the world and people who've struggled with terror so it's really mature adult ideas you'll be discussing in these poems. English literature, in honesty, is my favourite part of teaching, teaching English. You'll discover so much about Britain's culture and history. You'll explore complex ch and challenging ideas and concepts, such as whether or not we have free will and we ever can make a decision to ourselves, to whether or not love is something which can corrupt and lead to, to violence, to that we manage our society and whether or not it's fair that some people end up richer than others. Through your study of English literature, you'll develop, develop analytical and argumentative skills. You'll come out someone who's able to offer different interpretations to present a clear and convincing argument in a forceful manner. And you'll read, you'll get a chance to read fascinating stories and fascinating plays, something which is often a welcome reprieve when obviously starts building it can be a real break from the monotony of revision to just sit down and just read a good story finally the skills and benefits of this GCSE well if you're someone who's thinking about studying A levels or going to university it will develop the essay writing skills which are crucial for higher levels of education you'll be memorizing lots of quotations character names and plot points something important for any job we all need to have powerful memory so we can store ideas and information You'll learn to empathise with a range of characters from diverse backgrounds, developing your emotional intelligence, something that more and more workforces and jobs are asking for. The benefit of your English literature GCSE is that you'll also link with, with learning from other topics. So we'll link with topics you might have discovered in art or um, historical trends you might have talked about in history. So you'll link with your other learning too. And finally, and possibly my favourite point, you have to argue and to articulate your ideas clearly so you'll finish the course better able to argue your viewpoint. Thank you for your time, you know.